Rory, thanks as always for talking to us on Off The Ball. You're about to go on stage in front of 1,800 people with the most successful manager of modern times, a man who speaks at the Harvard Business School, Alex Ferguson. You a little bit nervous? Um, I feel like I'm pretty used to these sort of scenarios, so I'm not, I'm not too nervous, and I think it's, um, it's helpful that I've gotten to know Alex pretty well over the last couple of years. So, um, you know, it's very good of him to, to agree to come here and do this. And um, I think his presence here will, will make the night even more special. So uh, looking forward to it. I hope I don't get asked too many difficult questions, but, um, you know, I'm sure it'll be a great night, um, not just for golf fans, but obviously for football fans and, um, and everyone that's just interested in their sport. Do you ever get nervous anymore? I do. Yeah, of course I do. Um, Oh, you, you need to, you know, you need to feel nervous at something. If you, if you don't get nervous, it means you don't really care about something. So when I was get the nervous. last time then? Um, probably last week at the players, whenever I realized the greens were running about 20 at the stint meter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I get nervous every week. I get nervous over every first tee shot I hit at any tournament because, you know, there's a bit of an anxiousness and anxiety and you're just trying to get going and get off to a good start. So, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't get nervous. You spent your formative years as a golfer looking at the greats and learning from them. Now that you are one of the great golfers, are you looking at people from different strands to learn from them when you meet someone like Alex Ferguson, when you're meeting the elite kind of people that you get to meet on a weekly basis? Who, who are the people you look at now and who are the people you really admire? Yeah, definitely. I think once you get to a certain level, like I, you know, all the way through my golfing career, I was trying to learn from you know, the, the, the likes of a Darren Clark or a Potter Carrington or, um, you know, Graham McDowell, whoever was, was um, you know, you know a few of these guys showed me the ropes along the way, which was very good of them. But then once you get to a certain level, you do start to look at different sports and see guys at the top of their sport and, and what can you take from them and what do they do? And, um, yeah, I mean, speaking to the likes of, of Sir Alex, who was at the top of uh, his profession for so many years and... Um, you look at other guys, you look at, um, you know, I've, I've obviously gotten to know a few of the tennis players over the years, Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Andy Murray, um, you know, the, you know, a few of the football players. I mean, you know, anything, you know, I, I think once you get to the top level, that extra one or two percent can make a huge difference. And, and I think we're all looking at ways to, um, to improve our performance and even um you know a couple of weeks ago i i went on holiday and bumped into paul o'connell and we were just chatting right. about loads of different things and you know what what he you know you know obviously at the end of his career what he perceived as success and what he felt like he did to to achieve the things that he did and and picking the brains of guys that have been at the top level is always it's it's obviously interesting for for me as you're trying to perform better as a golfer, but also just as a sports fan, just to get inside these these guys' heads. Yeah, and elite sports people often talk about getting in the zone and even reading Jordan Spieth last week before his first tournament back about the Masters, talking about that adrenaline rush and how the very best, they enjoy that adrenaline rush, that actually things slow down. And a lot of those people you spoke about, I think have mentioned that as well. Are you getting into that zone at the moment? <laughs> I'm trying to. I, I feel like I'm awfully close to getting into that zone. Um, you know, I, I was actually just talking to, to Sir Alex about this upstairs. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, ability-wise and everything that I'm doing on the golf course, it's all there. But, you know, it, it's that, you know, as I said, that extra 2% or the, the mental side of it, you know, that, that I feel is just slightly holding me back at the minute. And that's, that's you know, turning, you know, tournaments where I feel like I should be able to win into, you know, finishing fourth or finishing 10th or whatever it may be. So um you know very slight margins but i'm i'm definitely i'm I, I feel like i'm close to getting into that zone but i'm i'm just not quite there at the minute yeah you've had these blips before and we all love to read a lot into them and wonder when it's going to turn and you think back to 2012 and it came with the pga and a couple of big fedex cup tournaments came in 2014 is this different does this feel different are you taking a different approach are you speaking to different people it feels different because I'm playing much better. I think that's the thing. It's not like I'm missing cuts. You know, I'm 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 getting annoyed because I'm not winning tournaments. I'm still finishing. You know, I'm still, you know, playing decent golf. But I'm just. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm holding myself back from from lifting trophies and you know, you know, like top fives and top tens are nice, but it's not yeah, what I play for. Into top tens. Yeah, what you're exactly. going to be judged upon. Exactly. You know, it's it's about winning tournaments, and um, so I feel like in that way it's very different because I'm playing better. It feels very similar to this time two years ago in 2014, where 
it, it, you know, something just needed, I needed a catalyst, something to happen and I won at Wentworth. And then from there I had, you know, you know, my best year to date, my best, obviously my best summer. Um, so I'm sort of, I don't want to wait for that to happen this year. I want to make it happen. Um, and there'd be no better place to do it than obviously this week here at the Irish Open. Yeah, how do you cope with everybody analysing every little thing of your game? And I go from those of us on a sports show and we do a golf podcast and we do it every week saying, oh, he's too conservative at the moment where that's not him. And even to the very top where Paul McGinley has been asked about you, every guy who does a press conference is asked about you. Paul McGinley saying more or less what you've said, that it's just a little bit of focus that's off at the moment. Do you read any of this? Do you, are there certain people that you're taking it on board from? Um you know, I, look, there's 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 obviously ongoing discussions within my team all the time. Um, my caddy JP, my coach Michael Bannon, uh, everyone that knows me, everyone that knows my game, and you know, those those are the people that I listen to. Those yeah. are the people that I trust. Um, people question them as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I I think we've, you know, if you look back at my record, I think that speaks for itself, and and we know what to do, and they know they know me better than than anyone else so I feel like we've got a good blueprint and it's just a matter of um, you know just getting back to that level where I was or that mentality maybe um, I, I, it's hard to put my finger on it because everything feels like it's in good shape but uh, it's just these maybe you know couple of stretches of holes each tournament which which cost me a, a chance to win so um, it's very close but you know as I said it's it's you know, I, I just I need to make something happen for it to yeah. to slip out of this sort of neutral state I'm in. Alex Ferguson's main connection with golf and main connection with Irish golf was at the last Ryder Cup when Paul McGinley brought him in as part of the template to speak to the team. And he wanted a very specific role, which was managing Manchester United at home when you're the better team, when you have the big stars and how to capitalize on that. And I was thinking it's sort of like this week and it's sort of like you at the Irish Open where you come in every year as the favourite and for the last couple of years, miss cuts. And I think throughout your career, it's maybe a tournament that you've struggled to really get on top of. Mm -hmm. Ten years into it, are you more or less there? Is it a very different approach to even five years ago? Uh, I think so. I think that you know one of the big differences between uh, coming to the Irish Open now and coming to the Irish Open ten years ago is I don't quite have as much time as I did back then to, you know, prepare and work on my game and doing stuff like this tonight. You're not here on a Tuesday night to yeah. 1,800 people. <laughs> exactly. But, um, you know, that's not an excuse. You know, it's a great position to be in. But at the same time, uh, you know, I'll be the first to say I've put too much pressure on myself at this event over the years and um, maybe not enjoyed it as much as I as I should have. You know, there, you, you don't get a chance to play in front of your, your home fans yeah. very often. So, and, you know, my my performances over the past three years here have been pathetic to put it lightly so um i need to play better this year and i know but i feel like i am i feel like i'm playing much better this year than i have you know coming into the irish open the last couple of years so you know there's no reason why i couldn't go out this week and, and play well and, and and have a great chance to win yeah you're leaving your mark on this tournament in another way with your foundation sponsoring it last year we saw ricky fowler come over ernie ells sergio garcia they're not here this year it's still a stellar lineup but how much did last year take out of you in terms of as what often people say about you know your time your most valuable commodity and is that something you'd like to do again or is it just something that's not possible yeah i mean i think we're trying to build this tournament to where uh i'm not going to have to ask these guys to come and play um like for example i'm going to switzerland to, to help Sergio out with the day in in july i'm going to go play the south african open uh at the end of this year at the start of next year for ernie you know so it was just uh and the week took quite a lot out of me so you know, I didn't really want to keep writing IOUs to people yeah. uh, for coming to play in the Irish Open. So that's why we're trying to build this event up. You know, you look at it, it's four million euros this year. Hopefully we're going to increase that prize fund a lot over the next few years and make it one of the, the most prestigious tournaments on, on the European Tour. Is and, the Lynx and course an advantage? I think it is. I think getting, you know, a, a good Lynx course uh, definitely entices people to come over and play. And, you know, if we can get the Irish Open to a Lynx course every year and to a suitable date so that the guys coming from America can stay here in Europe and build up to the you know the Open Championship I think that would be ideal but that's you know three or four years down the line but that's you know that's the overall plan and, and hopefully we can you know we can achieve that thanks as always for taking the time to talk to us enjoy the night enjoy the week thank you cheers